Uh, Martin, first of all, what is it that Keir Starmer has said that has caused so much uh, eruption from certain sides of the party? Good evening. Well, I wouldn't underestimate the anger that's being felt amongst many of us in the Labour Party at the moment. And that's because uh, last week when Keir Starmer was interviewed on LBC, Keir Starmer basically said that Israel had the right to essentially uh, commit war crimes by switching off water, food and electricity supplies and essentially uh, creating the forced exodus of 1.1 million people. And since then, he has kind of rolled back on that stance, saying that humanitarian corridors should now be opened. But he hasn't apologised for that stance, first and foremost. And he's still uh, not mentioned a key word in all of this, which is ceasefire. And that is absolutely what we need to see uh, our political leaders talk about now is because we're seeing so much bloodshed. And, you know, the horrors that were committed by Hamas a couple of weeks ago, you know, they were unspeakable. But one crime does not justify another crime. And that is exactly what we're seeing in Gaza at the moment. And as a parent of two young children, I am absolutely shocked and appalled to see the price that is being paid by children in Gaza. 1,000 children have now been killed in this conflict in Gaza, and my heart absolutely bleeds for them. Uh, people will all, uh, always argue on, on either side of this, as, as you know, Martin, on, on, on numbers and statistics and uh, the various uh, implications on either side of this. I, I get all of that. Um, there might be people watching this, however, saying, hang on a sec, you know, this is a, a, a democratically elected government, uh, a first world country, Israel, fighting what is essentially a medieval death cult that is a recognised and prescribed terror group. What is it about that that people on your side of Labour are not understanding? And perhaps that is Keir Starmer's position. Well, frankly, and I think that's a bit of a, a bizarre question. You know, I, I, first well, and foremost, a fact, I'm a though, humanitarian. Right, it I'm is, a, it is a fact. It's, one is a democratically elected country fighting a terrorist group, like an ISIS group. Well, has first and that foremost, kind of I'm a humanitarian, and I've, I've, I've mentioned how shocked We're all and appalled I was at the attacks by Hamas two weeks ago. But as I said, one crime does not justify another crime, and we are seeing uh, Israel absolutely bombard Gaza with tons and tons of munitions at the moment, and there is a humanitarian catastrophe unfolding before our very eyes, live in real time, and we really need our political leaders to step up and call for a ceasefire to end the bloodshed, and I think all reasonable people would agree with that. You know, we are seeing innocent people pay an absolutely catastrophic price um, uh, at the moment and we really need to allow these civilians in Gaza to get access to food, to get access to water and, uh, and for an end to the bloodshed. Do you, do you sense, and, and I ask this question completely objectively, I hope you'll understand that, but there are many people who will extrapolate from this that this is the, the very part of the Labour Party that Keir Starmer has tried to get rid of. It is your guys, it is momentum, it is the Corbynites, it is all of that area responsible for those allegations. Whatever people think of that, of anti-Semitism, this is you guys back in action and now you feel you have a mandate and a green light to display those traits that you were accused of and the very reason why Keir Starmer's moved on and left you guys behind. I mean, I'm... I'm almost speechless at that question, Ian, I really am. I am a Jewish Labour Party member and I will not let my grief for those victims in Israel be used as a, as a weaponization for genocide. It is absolutely despicable what happened in Israel, but it is absolutely despicable what is happening in Gaza at the moment. So for you to point out that Keir Starmer is trying to get rid of this faction within the Labour Party. But it, it has been a, it's been a troubling tonight, faction. To me, people, no, I'm going to answer this question. Hundreds and hundreds of Jewish people gathered tonight in Westminster uh, in absolute disgust at the war crimes that are being committed by Israel. So to basically homogenise... You're, you're entire, kind of at it uh, already, really, Martin, aren't you? Or you're, you're talking about the war crimes. Israel would say, this is retaliation. The, 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 the crimes committed 
by Hamas on October the 7th were there for all to see, and Italy uh, and so, Israel so, so are you, retaliating so that just, to that. They're defending So do you think themselves. that justifies war crimes being committed then, Ian? You call it war crimes? Is that, is that your, your terminology for a country defending well, the, itself the, against the, a prescribed the, terrorist the, group? The UN have described it as war crimes, what's happening in Gaza at the moment. Okay. Israel has switched off food, water, electricity supplies. They're made, uh, creating the forced deportation of over a million Gazan um, civilians. Uh, you know, there, there are there are no humanitarian routes at the moment. You know, these are war crimes taking place before our very eyes. And as I said, okay. one crime does not uh, justify another. I will keep going back to that phrase. And, you know, we need our political leaders to stand up right, right. now and call for a ceasefire and an end to the bloodshed. Can, can I, let's get a word from Alec Shelbrook, uh, who's with us, the Conservative MP. Alec, uh, good to see you. Welcome as well. Um, I mean, give us your response to the overarching discussion we've just been having there uh, with Martin. Well, I think, first of all, I mean, I, I was asked by somebody about... Um, what I thought about um, the explosion at the hospital, um, which um, has shocked so many people. And I said, well, the reality is, is that thousands more people are going to die. Um, and I think that what we have seen um, over the last couple of days is Western leaders trying to work in the area, in the region, to try and make sure this doesn't escalate to a regional level and create even more bloodshed at more borders, and equally trying to work with the Egyptian government um, at the Rafa border, trying to get aid in. But there are some reports that um, Hamas are stopping um, that aid coming in at the um, Gazan border. So um, this is a highly complex issue. Where I do totally disagree is this argument about its war crimes and about um, Israel um, being somehow the aggressor. The cause for a ceasefire means they want Israel to not respond, not do anything else. Well, we know what happens next. We saw it on the 7th of uh, October. We know, we know that, um, um, that the bombings carry on. We know that the water pipes, the 100 million euros of EU aid that was put in to develop a water system in Gaza was dug up by Hamas, turned into rockets. This um, whole situation is coming from this terrorist organisation. And what we also know with an international law is that if you are to launch a ground invasion, you have to give the um, population time to leave. Um, last Thursday, last Thursday, a week ago, Israel said people need to leave Gaza City and move south. That is what they've been doing. That's not a war crime. That's working in international law to limit um, civilian loss of life. OK. Martin, you're shaking your head. I mean, I just completely disagree. I mean, I don't think Alec, Alec completely understands the, the, the situation out there. Where, where are these people meant to go, Alec? You know, they, they, they're being asked to leave um, northern Gaza to go to southern Gaza, but Israel are bother, bombing southern Gaza. You know, they're being asked to leave southern Gaza and go to the, uh, and go to the West Bank, but Israel are also uh, waging military conflict in, in the West Bank. These people have got nowhere to go. And, you know, you're essentially, you're essentially asking the evacuation of what is essentially an open air prison. And it is a humanitarian catastrophe. And politicians like your, yourself, Alex, should show a little bit of humanity. How, what is an acceptable number of dead children for you? A thousand children have died in the bombing in Gaza in the last week. OK, I kiss my children goodnight tonight. And if I was in Gaza... I would know. I might not see them well, in the can morning. Can I ask, Martin, where and are you, you getting that? that is where are you getting that figure of by, well, by the Israeli okay. government? Where, where are you getting that figure of a thousand children? Just out of interest. That is a that is a that is a, a confirmed figure from Hamas. That is a confirmed figure, Ian. F from Hamas. There are, listen, there are other agencies working in Gaza okay. that are that are totaling the number of dead. So you're disputing that, are you, Ian? No, I'm asking. Out of interest, where the well, figure came from. You disputing that on, on national TV. Did you hear me dispute it? Okay. Yes, I did. When? You just, you just questioned that number. That I, I asked you where up. the figure came from. That, that has been in most news reports, in most Western media over the last few days. Uh, and that is fine, which is why I asked the question. Um, mm -hmm. In terms, do you think, Alex, of the visit by Rishi Sunak, do you sense that does anything for this war? Does it uh, in any way... Uh, enamour uh, Israel to feel more supported? Will it cause a problem back home? Is it a disruption from what's going on in the UK? What is the, you know, it's, it's, it's lots of praise for leaders when they arrive 
in the middle of war zones. Uh, but is there any real point to it? Well, I think it is important that, um, from my perspective that we um, do so show, so show solidarity with um, the Israelis, with the Israeli government. This was an uninvited attack. I take issue with the statement that it's an open um, prison camp, uh, sorry, an open air prison camp. Reality is, it's Hamas who have, have caused that situation. Israel left the Gaza Strip 18 years ago. In that time, Hamas have systematically turned it into a base to um, attack Israel with the stated aim of the destruction of the state of Israel. That is Hamas's stated aim. And whereas um, our politicians are out there, American politicians are out there, other world leaders are out there, doing everything we can to um, work with Israel and try and keep the regional tensions down as much as anything else and discuss um, how we get humanitarian aid in. Israel working um, with the West to try and limit humanitarian casualties, whereas Hamas wants to use the population to actually cause um, um, more death and destruction by shielding where they come from. That's why um, Israel is saying um, you need to um, move out of this area. This is where the ground offence is going to come because the tunnel network's underneath. And it is highly complex. But what I think is important is that you show the solidarity um, with the democratically elected free country of Israel to attack the prescribed terrorist organisation that keep launching murderous attacks upon it, because it wasn't just what happened last week, um, a couple of weeks ago, it's happening constantly. And you work within the regional area to try and uh, make sure that things can be done with humanitarian aid and not allow anybody else to agitate the situation and, and open up new fronts. So I think it is important that um, Western leaders or any leaders um, engage in this situation rather than um, pull down okay. the shutters. Uh, it is, it is, it is a pity. It is a pity that um, the American president was only able to have meetings um, in Israel. I think it would have been beneficial to the sure. region if he'd been able to carry out his original um, schedule and plan at the same okay. time. I, I want to get a quick word from our panel in just a second. Can I just ask you very quickly, Martin? Even from a, a momentum left-wing perspective. Was it good to see Rishi Sunak there? He talked about humanitarian issues. He's visiting various characters and leaders in that area, not just on one side. Is that a positive? I mean, I don't think there's really any anything positive that's come out of it if Israel is still bombing and uh, killing, uh, you know, civilians, women and children as we speak, you know, Rishi Sunak and UK's political leaders, leaders have essentially green-lighted these actions uh, from Israel. And until they demand a ceasefire, um, no, the, I can't see anything positive coming out of it other but, than just a PR exercise for a failing politician purely... and a PR exercise for Benjamin Netanyahu, who should be uh, essentially tried in The Hague for war crimes after this conflict finally ends. What, what about the boys and girls over there at Hamas? Do you not think they might be in the same dock, uh, possibly ahead of Mr Netanyahu, if that's your suggestion? Sorry, I didn't catch that, Ian. The, the, the people who are running, leading, instructing Hamas, should they not be ahead of anyone in that queue for war crimes? Well, is there a queue? Well, you know, Hamas committed horrendous terrorist acts in Israel. I said that at the top of this interview. Okay. Ian, and as a Jewish person, as a Jewish person, my heart absolutely bleeds for every single one of those victims in Israel. All right. But as I said, one crime does not justify another crime. Just... And my heart also yearns for every single. I hear it. I hear it, Martin. Thank you. To I... death in Gaza. Uh, Alec, very very quickly, you wanted to come back in on that. Very briefly, ten seconds, if you could, sir. Yeah, simply. I mean, the discussion of a ceasefire means Israel don't do anything. Allow Hamas to attack you again. And the reality is, is that when we talk about uh, war crimes, there are war crimes and terrorist acts being enacted upon Israel on a daily basis, and enough is enough. And if we want to stop the bloodshed and the killing, Hamas has to be taken out as the okay. organisation which is killing thousands of people in Israel and in the Gaza Strip. All right.